Let's talk about cloud components for this module. Now, when it comes to cloud components, again, it's more about understanding what the components do, of course. But in reality, as a cloud architect, a cloud engineer, cloud administrator, you'll likely not be, of course, managing any of this from a back-end perspective. That's going to be the, the uh, cloud providers, engineers, administrators, etc. You, on the other hand, working for uh, your customer or for your enterprise, you'll be more concerned about ensuring, for example, do I have enough virtual CPUs to perform the requirement? How do I size my disk space? These are things that you'll need to start considering. But from a cloud component perspective, we want to be aware of the different types of components. We'll, of course, see a question or so around this area on the exam. So, for example, when it comes to compute, the two main areas we're going to really be concerned with, if we have a compute issue, will generally be memory or CPU, uh, RAM being pretty much the same thing. Storage will be mainly focused on disk drives, disk space, and then basically HBAs. Network interfaces will be NICs and switches. Appliances could be anything from security to monitoring uh, to, to even other services like uh, firewalls, you name it, whatever you want to deploy. Generally, the options can be there. Hypervisors, API. So when it comes to hypervisors, generally the hypervisor uh, is, of course, managed by the cloud provider. You are more concerned about deploying virtual machines, of course, but you're not managing the hypervisor. But you do need to be aware that there is, of course, a need for hypervisors for that rack that the cloud provider is managing to be able to disperse your virtual machines. The APIs, though, this will be more of a concern for your developers to be able to connect to the cloud services. And we'll talk more about APIs in a few minutes. Client devices. Now, this is going to be typically, could be anything from a virtual private uh, network uh, connection, could be tokens, could be a HashiCorp device, whatever that may be. When it comes to cloud assets, we want to be aware that the cloud assets are not just physical, but it's really more about the data. It's about the knowledge. It's about skill sets and people. So, for example, data really, of course, should be the most important asset. Knowledge is important because when we deploy our cloud services, if we have turnover, this could be a big deal. So documenting and identifying areas around your cloud assets is really important. Running assessments is another big deal. Skill sets, uh, you know, with the cloud evolving and changing so rapidly, we really want to be aware of having the right skill sets to manage, for example, uh, for infrastructure as a service versus platform as a service, or, or even software as a service. It's all about knowing um, what we really need. And, and that comes into the people play. So when it comes to cloud assets, they can be physical or virtual. Now, what is the most important asset? Data should be the most important asset for your enterprise. And companies nowadays are doing everything they can to reduce the cost of storing data, but to store as much as possible, but also derive value from the data. For example, collecting data on you know, who buys what, when, and how. This is really important to certain types of organizations. When it comes to cloud APIs, we need to, of course, know what an API is. An API is an application programming interface. I like to really call this more of an on-ramp to the cloud. And what I mean by that is basically when it comes to connecting to the cloud service, the provider makes it easy through you as a cloud engineer, cloud architect, or really more or less cloud developer in a lot of cases, being able to understand how to interface with their services. And so therefore, the API is really more of connecting the building blocks. It's a way to integrate your application with their services. For example, if you want to run a uh, SQL um, service uh, query in the cloud, you could do pretty much the same thing as you're sort of already performing on-prem. It's just that you need to know the right APIs to interface with the SQL services. 
For example, with Google Cloud, you're going to want to use, of course, the right front end and back end services to be able to run a query against, for example, Cloud SQL or Cloud Spanner. Those are the SQL based services uh, in uh, Google Cloud that are relational. And again, it's all about knowing, for example, how to interface um, as efficiently as possible. Now, typically APIs, we're going to connect through with, with an endpoint. And I'll talk more about endpoints uh, coming up further on in another module. But basically, an endpoint is basically a gateway. And a gateway is really where the APIs are going to be managed and stored and maintained. So APIs do need to be understood for the exam. We need to know what they are, why they're important, and why they're really, as well, um, critical to, um, to, to understand, even as an architect or an engineer. Developers, of course, will get this better than you know, folks that don't develop. But basically, APIs are really going to be the interface between your services on-prem and their services in the cloud. Now, typically, REST and SOAP are the most common API types. I would also like to add Open API is also very common now. Google supports that. Um, AWS is sort of starting to get in, into the game there as well with Open APIs. APIs interact with the cloud infrastructure, basically. And there's typically front-end APIs and then back-end APIs. And, and also, too, just be aware that if you have, for example, a storage API in AWS, it's going to be very different than the one you're going to use in Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure. And here's an example of how an API would work. So over here, you might be developing an application that is going to interface with some kind of Google Cloud services. So we need to connect your application to Google Cloud. And to do that, we're going to use what is called an application programming interface. And these are provided by the vendor. And therefore, it's going to interface, for example, with whatever services. It could be compute. It could be storage. It could be uh, data queries. It could be machine learning, AI, whatever it is. So an API is really the front end, a gateway to the cloud. And again, when it comes to test tips and APIs, uh, just again, it, the main point here is to know what an API is, know why we need one. They connect to what? To an endpoint. So again, just be aware, from a uh, test perspective, we need to know what they are, why they're important. Uh, and also, each device, of course, has its own version of the API. This is really the extent of the knowledge around APIs you need to know for the Cloud Plus exam. And with that said, it's really, really very straightforward from that perspective. Lastly, we, of course, do want to be aware that front-end devices um, are important. And when I refer to a front-end device, basically what I mean is that that's going to be your uh, basically client application. And the back end is going to typically be the provider resources. And again, pretty much front end is where you're going to connect to. The back end is going to be where the services are basically connecting to other services. That is all, my friends, for this module. Let us move on.